Okay, let's take a look at this problem here. So what we have is two functions. We have this function f of x, and we have another function g of x. And f of x is equal to 4x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 7x minus 3. And we want to figure out what 2 times f of x minus 3 times g of x is equal to. So uh, this kind of falls in line with the topic of function operations. And uh, of course, we're going to simplify this problem, but I'm going to talk about some other function operations that you need to know. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into those. I'll give you some guidance on how to make sure you understand functions. But if you're studying, uh, you know, um, this kind of level of mathematics, which this would be algebra and beyond functions, you just need to know that functions are extremely important in mathematics. You have to know um, as much as you possibly can about them. And what we're going to be doing here is like, you know, minimum kind of required uh, skill sets uh, in terms of dealing with functions. But I always like to kind of write this word out here, functions. Let me see here. Hopefully I didn't misspell it. Functions, it looks pretty good. But anyways, you can kind of see that root word there is fun. Just remember, functions are fun. And you got, to, <laughs> and some of you are like, oh my goodness, that's, that's kind of corny. Well, it might be corny, but what I'm trying to get across to you is that I need to embrace uh, the idea that you need to learn everything you possibly can about functions. And there's a lot to know, okay? Uh, domain, range, what a function is, one-to-one -one functions, inverse functions, composite functions, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to get too over, uh, have you too overwhelmed um, uh, with the, all these topics about functions. Just know that's an extremely important uh, topic in algebra and beyond. So what we're going to be doing here is actually pretty simple, and I'll uh, kind of touch lightly on some other function operations. So let's get uh, to it. But actually, uh, before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I have a lot of specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, maybe the CLEP exam, Accuplacer, Alex, uh, teacher certification, nursing entrance, ASVAB, there's a lot of tests out there that people have to take that have a considerable amount of mathematics. And if you don't get through the math section uh, on these particular exams, you do not uh, achieve your goals. And a lot of these goals are, you know, it could be the difference. It could be career stoppers. You know, there's a, you know, for example, like teacher certification, if you don't pass the math section on a teacher certification exam, you don't get your certification, can't teach. So, um, if you're preparing for a particular exam and need assistance, just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. You should be able to find what you're looking for. If you don't see, uh, your course, just drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. But I um, also do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you uh, homeschool, have a great uh, homeschool uh, learning system. And then obviously help those of you who are just struggling in math, having a tough time, can definitely help you out. But one thing you have to be doing to help yourself out is taking great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take fantastic notes, and I'm not talking about good notes, I'm talking about great notes, almost always do excellent uh, in terms of their grades uh, at the end of the year. And the reverse is true. Uh, those students who just like, you know, like I did way back in the 80s, you know, my notes were like, I'm taking notes. What I was doing was just writing a bunch of scribbles scratch. And then I would be like, hmm, what did I write down? Sometimes I wouldn't even take notes because I was talking to my best buddies and everything else. And then I would look very sad at the end of the year when my grades came. And I'm like, what happened? What happened? You know, I would tell myself, oh, man, uh, you know, uh, I would just make up all of these reasons. In reality, I wasn't focused. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't engaged. Of course, you know, I learned from those hard lessons. So um, the key to learning math is remaining focused. And there's no other uh, better activity to remain focused, engaged uh, than taking notes. So take great notes and things will get better. And we can turn these uh, faces into this kind of stuff. Believe me when I tell you, this will be the secret to your success in terms of mathematics. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, now, if you think you know how to do this problem, I would always encourage you to pause the video and go ahead and do it. Um, again, it's not that difficult, but we'll walk through the uh, how to do this step-by-step step in a second. So 
But um, as I promised, I wanted to talk quickly about function operations. So here we have a function. It could be whatever. It could be 2x plus 1. And here I have another function. Let's call this like x squared minus 9. It doesn't make a difference. You can have all types of functions. But what uh, you need to understand is that we have uh, this area uh, within functions called function operations, meaning that we can add functions. Okay, We can go uh, f of x plus g of x, or we can describe this notation. Now, what do you think this means? Well, it means uh, exactly what it, it's stating. What we're going to do is going to add this. f of x is equal to this. g of x is equal to this. We're just going to add these two things up. So really, that's all we're going to be doing, even in this particular problem. But uh, I'll show you here uh, in a second. So you can add functions. You can multiply functions. You could do any various type of operations. Now, the one that gets students um, in trouble or that confuses students a lot is uh, uh, composite functions. So that's like f of g of x. Uh, a lot of students get scared or g of f of x. They kind of like, oh, my goodness, it looks so complicated. And they're like, they're like this, you know, oh, no, function, uh, composite functions. Listen, all this stuff, I don't care where your level of math or understanding is right now, you can do all this stuff. Okay, you just have to just focus, take notes, and just start off, with, you know, with some easy problems. But on all of this, uh, function, uh, composite functions and all this kind of good stuff, if you need additional help with functions, let me just state it right now. I have tons of videos in my algebra playlist on my channel about functions to include composite functions. So if those trouble you, um, you know, don't worry. You know, we can fix you up in a jippy. But let's go ahead and uh, move on to the problem. So again, uh, we're dealing with function operations. We can manipulate functions in any kind of uh, manner. So let's take a look uh, at the problem here and uh, see how we would approach it. Okay, so here we have f of x is equal to 4x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 7x minus 3. Now, what I'm stating here is that the function is equal to this. Okay, so if I write this, it means f of x, and f of x means this. So they're, they're, they're uh, equivalent, okay? So if you see a f of x, I could replace it with a 4x plus 1. So here, I'm trying to figure out what 2 times f of x minus uh, 3 times g of x is. Now... I'm going to replace the f of x function with 4x plus 1. Now, what I'm going to do when I do this, though, okay, I'm going to use parentheses. That will keep you out of hot water in terms of the distributive property. So always, when you're substituting, always use parentheses. It's a good idea. Just believe me on that one. All right, so we got uh, 2 times f of x. So I'm going to replace that f of x with 4x plus 1. And you can see I did that there. And then I have uh, minus 3 times g of x. I'm going to replace that. Uh, with the 7x minus 3. Now, remember, the function was written like so, but I'm putting in those uh, grouping symbols with parentheses so I don't get in trouble. So let's take a look at what we have here. 2 times f of x minus uh, 3 times g of x is equivalent to this. Okay, so I'm substituting the f of x and the g of x for the respective functions. And um, at this point, we're really just talking about uh, basic algebra, distributive property and combining like terms to kind of uh, clean us up. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go, okay, 2 times uh, 4x. Uh, we're going to do the distributive property. We have a number outside of uh, the uh, sum or difference. So that's going to be uh, 8x. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Then we'll go over here. I have negative 3 times 7x. That's negative 21x. Um, and then negative 3 times a negative 3 is positive 9. So I'm going to add like terms, 8x and negative 21x will give me a negative 13x, and then 2 and 9 is 11. Okay, so now we can just simply write uh, 2 times f of x minus 3 times g of x is equal to negative 13x plus 11. Now, if you got this problem right all on your own, I would suggest giving yourself a big happy face, maybe a little mohawk, an A plus and a 100%. That's excellent. Yeah, I'll give you one star. This wasn't a terribly difficult problem. You know, if you stick around and watch more of my videos, you'll be able to earn more stars on more of the challenging uh, problems. But this is uh, kind of fairly easy. Uh, kind of test question or quiz question. I would expect, you know, those of you who are taking notes and paying attention to be able to ace this. You got to remember, as a math teacher, um, oftentimes math teachers will design tests. They'll kind of be like, okay, listen, I'm going to give you a bunch of easy questions if for kind of reward those students who have been taking notes. Like, it's not that hard to mess these up. 
And then I'll give you some median questions here that most people should be able to get as well. Then I'll give you a few difficult questions, all right? And this is what's going to separate the people uh, that are going to get a B or A on that test, okay? So uh, at a minimum, all of you out there can at least pass the algebra with a B, and most of you can also get an A, I'm sure. All right, so this is basic function operations. Again, there's uh, more to this, more practice, more variations of this stuff. I would uh, suggest... Um, really practice those composite functions, function uh, composition, because that seems to get uh, a lot of students some trouble. But uh, don't worry, I'm going to give you some suggestion, uh, some some extra suggestions here on how to uh, master function. So one, uh, check out my uh, on my channel in my algebra playlist. I have tons of videos on functions. You need to understand what a function is. Okay, domain, range, inverse functions. There's a ton of different a subtopic. So whatever you're studying, obviously composite functions as well. So get into those. If you like my teaching instruction, there's a plenty of stuff on there, but better yet, you can just jump into one of my courses, maybe like my algebra one course uh, would definitely help you out. But if this video was helpful in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That have always helps me out. And then obviously please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, posting new material all the time. So I am here to serve you. Okay. What's my mission? Well, really, my mission, my main goal is to make math clear and understandable so, you know, you can achieve what you want to achieve, right? You're going to have to get through whatever math classes to graduate or to get your certifications to whatever the case is so I can help you along with that journey. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.